Hi, I'm Darlene Washington, and this is Spiritually Intriguing, the Church Edition. Here we are once again, and we're talking with Reverend Dr. John E. Jackson, Sr. of Trinity United Church of Christ in Gary, Indiana. Boy, are we having a good time here. Yes, Welcome we again. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're just going to get right into it, because we have some things that I really want to just talk about. Um, uh, my profession um, has been advertising it. Uh, administratively uh, inside of advertising and one of the things that we discovered um, in those industries was that the the budget the way it's put to you the planning budget or the budget does not include ethnic dollars <laughs> <laughs> or doesn't include that much ethnic dollars and um, you know it's been a problem throughout the years we, we have overcome a great deal um, you know, over the years, but it used to be a serious problem back in the 90s. It was, it was so major. And, and, and the thing is now it's still a problem, but because there's a new arena that has taken off and there's still even yet more inclusion, I'm sorry, exclusion. More importantly, this issue has caught the eye of Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. And he's put together uh, an initiative. I'll tell you, here's my question. Okay. Um, why do we need a digital inclusion initiative spearheaded by Jesse Jackson Sr. to generate black advertising dollars in uh, general market digital advertising? Is racism a part of this problem? What's causing this? Racism is the problem. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you, you, because you're in advertising, you, you know of Tom Burrell. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a very powerful book, Brainwashed. Yeah. And he talks about how media images have been manipulated to make us look uh, certain ways that are demeaning and pejorative. Mm -hmm. And so uh, racism is at the bedrock of this. This, this new enterprise, the digital uh, media and things like that, uh, is, is, is a brave new world uh, where money is to be made. Mm -hmm. And because of racism, because the country was founded on racism, mm -hmm. uh, there are still a small select few who do not look like us, who are in control of uh, uh, the majority of the industry. Mm -hmm. And they are invested with keeping others out. Mm -hmm. And so we have to break down this wall. Yeah. We, and, and, and that's why we ought not get comfortable. Uh, we, we have to keep fighting and recognizing that uh, that this issue of racism, I don't know if it'll be eradicated in our lifetime, Yeah. Uh, which means we need to keep fighting. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we can get it to a point where it's, I don't even, I don't like the word tolerable. I, I like mm. the word that it's eliminated. Exactly. Because um, it's, it's like uh, back in slavery when uh, white women and white men said, oh well, they entertain the idea. Listen, they entertain the idea of a black person sitting at the counter with them or being educated or actually being able to speak properly. It was it was like a privilege to know that they considered it. You know, like it, it was something it was so rare and so unheard of that it had to be an entertainable idea. It was it was fodder and conversation and things of this nature. Thank God we've come past that. But it's, we're human beings. We are all human beings. If you get cut, baby, trust me, you're going to bleed. You're going to bleed just like everybody else. Nobody is going to, you know, uh, uh, not cut you because you're, I mean, I'm saying a knife isn't going to not cut you just because you're of another race. So if we throw the knife, bam, boom, and you're in the way, you're cut. And it just speaks to the same fact that we are all human beings. We bleed the same way. Our bodies operate majority in the same way. When you get into your digestion and community and economic issues, then that's where things can get a little different. But that's all a part of racism that brings these sorts of problems. Yeah, so, oh my gosh. But, you know, more, more importantly, Everyone's livelihood is important. Let's let's be inclusive of everyone. If you, it's no reason to close a door when you're able to extend your hand. You know, the same will be done unto you eventually. That's what I think about that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next topic. Um, recently, a reality TV star 
um, was shot on the day of his mother's funeral by his nephew of all people. It's like, what on earth is going on in this world? Um, it's Love and Hip Hop in Atlanta, I think, is the name of this show. And the guy we're referring to is Benzino, um, this gentleman, his, his first name escapes me, I apologize, but we do have a link for the article, you'll be able to check him out. The situation is though, um, the article indicates that there was some issue pertaining to the way his mother was being cared for and this family member was unhappy with that. And um, it got turned into another issue in other articles where they were saying, oh, um, the issue was jealousy and, 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 and envy and this sort of thing. But, you know, we all know that when you operate in the world, there's always cause and effect. So this was a part of cause and effect. One person's uh, provision was not acceptable for another person's opinion of what should have been given and so there was your cause and effect situation but the subject the, the question rather is um, recently a TV star was shot by his own nephew on the way to his mother's funeral the article indicates the shooter um, believed that his uh, that the victim was not properly caring for the deceased what does the um, ruthlessness of this act say about our morals today and and what of the care issue that is being ignored and blamed on jealousy and envy uh, I'm glad you mentioned reality TV show um, because reality TV is not reality. <laughs> Except in this case, it wasn't on TV, but reality was lived. Yeah. Uh, and it speaks to uh, one dysfunction in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, the character Benzino uh, and the other, and some of the other characters on the show Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, uh, which I I, I, I I watch reality TV. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you see, you see, display some dysfunction, yeah. and all of it, even though it's scripted, all of it is is is, is not uh, foreign to the particular characters. Right. So what I'm saying is that violence has been or is still a part of many of the characters on these reality I TV see, shows I see. Uh -huh. because that is the context that they come out of. Yeah, yeah. And so he goes back home, and he he's got uh, some dysfunction. Uh, and then dislike because of his nephew, mm -hmm. and uh, his nephew does what they, what has been normal. Mm -hmm. You strike back violently, mm -hmm. and so unfortunately, uh, uh, I think instead of just looking at the result, mm -hmm. uh, if we look at the broader picture here, uh, the rise in violence in our communities is directly connected to the rise of violence in our government. Mm -hmm. When our president can send drones to another country to indiscriminately kill people who are associated with a group of people that we don't like in this country and then also kill innocent civilians in other countries and just say, oh well, uh, then we are perpetuating that. Mm -hmm. Because what is being seen, what is being heard in the news, then people naturally are going to feel this is the way you solve problems. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, we have to begin to connect the dots. We have to connect the dots mm -hmm. because we live in a violent society. It didn't come from the ground up, it came from the top down. Right. I, you know, I really agree with that. And, and something I wanted to touch on is that when you speak of the drones, now, um, there's, there was a movie some years ago, I think it was called Casualties of War. And, um, but a casualty of war, as we know, is just a necessary uh, means to an end to achieve the goal. Um, then you could say technically casualties of life, in which that is what um, his nephew would have been operating on, that, that mode of, uh, that modus operandi. But it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessary to function this way. Um, there have been many people out here trying to change the way we approach war. We want to have less physical slaughter of mankind and more resolution to problems that can be dealt with if we would just put forth the serious communication effort that is necessary. And when I say serious, I mean serious communication effort. It's got to be some leniency, some giving, some taking. And it, it, everybody ain't willing to compromise, but you don't have to go to war. I, I've always said, put those ones in in the in the in the boxing room <laughs> that, that want to go to war. <laughs> Let them whip right, on right, each other. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. Know? 
and, and then you know maybe they can get a clearer understanding. <laughs> but no disrespect to the the brave and few who defend our country. No disrespect. They're to doing you. their job. You're doing they're what you what job. we need you to do because of you know the people at the, at the top. But um, no, you know we have to protect ourselves as well. But moving on, um, poor Benzino, his family. I'm so sorry this thing has happened to you. Um, I'm so sorry what has happened to your nephew. Yes. I hope that um, the family can come together and, and resolve these issues. Um, it is not for anyone to determine how much um, Mr. Benzino of Love and Hip Hop in Atlanta should provide for his mother. And it is not for Mr. Nephew, I forget your name, sir, but it's not for you to decide that if this, your uncle didn't do what you were expecting him to do or what he should be doing according to your standards that you should kill him yeah. it is you know that's that's more of our casualties not of war but of life let's let's not go there let's let's bring um peace and resolution um to this family and our prayers um for the mother as well who is also the sister of, of the victims okay that about does it for this segment of spiritually intriguing the church edition We'll chat more with Reverend Dr. Johnny Jackson Sr. later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.